Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Android Game Development Kit. Now this was released a couple of weeks back, uh, there was a blog on the uh, Android Developer blog on July the 12th talking about it, and what this does is it makes it easier to develop, to develop Android games using C or C++, or tool chains that use C or C++. For example, if you're using Unreal Engine or Unity, uh, Android Game Development Kit could still make your life a better place. So we're going to take a look at what is in this kit, what it's all about, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So. Uh, the Android Game Development Kit features the following three key tenets. Code built for game development. All of our libraries have been built and tested uh, with performance in mind using C or C++ APIs. Reduce the fragmentation. Uh, the, AGD the AGDK tools and libraries work across many different Android versions. Most of these features will work on almost any device in use today. That's nice because you always run into like Android dependency hell where you need Android SDK 2.1 or 21.1.3 or 22 or 23 or 19 or so on. That reduction in fragmentation is nice and is built for, built by Android for Android. Features will be enhanced by future Android platform updates and the libraries will provide backward compatibility when, pro, when possible. So what this is going to do is make it easier to develop Android C++ games that work across a multitude of Android devices using C or C++. Now this is actually built into a number of different pieces. The Android Game Development Kit isn't just one thing. It's a collection of tools. Uh, at the first one we have there, and probably the one that would be most interesting to you if you are a Unity or Unreal Engine developer, is the Android Game Development Extension. Now what this does is makes it so you can create Android games easily in Visual Studio. So you see here in Visual Studio, I have it installed and now you're gonna see Android ARM platforms, x86 platforms and so on have been added to the list. There are a number of examples to get you up and running as well. We'll get back to that in the downloads in just a second, but this is one of them. This is an endless runner example and what you can see right in front of you is Android Main. This is the entry point into your C application uh, like so, Android main, and all you're doing is setting up, well in this case, a native engine. They, they created a class that is sort of like uh, a quasi or lightweight game engine, so we'll look at that in just a second. Uh, and then you run the game loop until the game is done, and then you delete the engine. So first off, to that native engine. As I mentioned, it's just sort of a lightweight engine that does things like provides the game loop, uh, integrates back with JNI, JNI being the Java native interface. That's the way you talk to Java code from C or C++. It's the bridge between those two languages. And a lot of what this SDK does is takes away the, the having to work with that bridge. So it, it provides uh, a number of different interfaces. So here's all those various different things. So if you're handling input coming in from your game engine, you'd handle it in Native Engine. So you can go here through the code. This is a great place to start. So you can see how you would interface to Java code. Here is the main entry loop. Here is how you handle various different events in the engine. Here is how you call back into JNI if you need to do so. So this will give you an idea of what everything is like. Now you're gonna notice a lot of little squigglies here too. That's because I don't actually have the Android SDK installed. They didn't say that was a prerequisite. So make sure that you have the Android SDK installed and set as a path before you create your first project or you're going to get errors. Another thing I wanna point out is if you run the installer, um, it'll give you the option to install for Visual Studio 2017 and 2019. I thought I had both installed. I only actually have 2019 installed and that caused the entire process to blow up. So when you're running the installer for the first time, if you've only got one of those two installed, uncheck the other one. Um, not gonna be a problem for most people, but it was an error when installing. All right, so you can see uh, the Android game extension, that is what basically extends Visual Studio. So what the big thing there is, so let's say you're working with Unreal Engine, right now what you have to do is spawn off into um, an Android developer studio, which is built off of um, uh, the uh, IntelliJ IDE, and you're gonna have to use that tool chain, whereas a lot of people, if you're creating a cross-platform game using something like Unreal Engine, there's probably a 99% chance what you're using is Visual Studio, not uh, Android Studio. So what this enables you to do is keep your development entirely inside of Visual Studio. So if you're working with Android platforms on Unreal or Unity, you're going to like the Android game extension because it allows you to just stick to Visual Studio and say, screw it to the entire Android Studio thing. And there's nothing wrong with Android Studio, but adding an entire IDE just to support one platform, that was a pain in the butt. Uh, so they're going to work with most, some of the most popular game engines to integrate their tools and libraries directly. Uh, we've got plugins. Uh, when well, that's not possible, we've focused on building plugins for game engines such as Unity. Plugins will be available in one place to help you get quickly what you need. Uh, and then there are a number of C++ libraries. These are the things that basically make it so that you don't have to deal with JNI. And dealing writing binding code is never particularly fun. And this is stuff you always need to do. So the first one we've got is the game activity. Now an activity in the world of Java development is basically uh, a program. 
in many ways. It says, I respond to this, handles a number of different combat callbacks and so on. So what they've done is they've created a class called Game Activity, provides a foundation for C++ games to build on, provides C interfaces for all the Android events you'd expect from screen rotation to app lifecycle. Um, this way you can minimize the amount of development time you spend in the Java language. So if you don't want to work in Java, they've created this Game Activity, which kind of abstracts away a lot of the stuff you'd need to do to where you'd have to call into Java uh, so you can work entirely in C or C++. They also created a library for game tech Text input, uh, and this has always been a bit of a pain, is to deal with the soft keyboard, you know, the keyboard that pops up when you need to do keyboard input. Um, so that has been integrated in as well. Works again across all Android versions. And then game controller, a way to handle game controllers, predictably enough. So those are the libraries that were added as well. And then we've got a number of different tools that are part of the, the thing as well. Uh, that's the GPU inspector uh, for frame profiling and, and basically seeing if there's any stalls or problems in your GPU's performance. Uh, they've got a number of profilers uh, in Android Studio and AGDE. So that's the extension uh, for the system, power, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then the performance tuner provides user telemetry. Uh, so if you're interested in checking this one out, uh, it is available. I will link this in the linked article down below if you want to go ahead and grab it for yourself. So again, it's made up of a number of different pieces. So we've got the uh, extensions for Visual Studio, which allows you to basically kick Android Studio completely to the curb and do your development directly in Visual Studio, which again, is going to be nice for something like uh, Unreal Engine users who are already developing, say for Windows and Mac and platforms and consoles and so on, all in Visual Studio. Well, now you can add Android directly in using that extension. Uh, they're going to integrate with various different game engines when they can, and when they can't, they're going to provide engine plugins, such as with Unity. Uh, we've got a number of different libraries in case in place, such as controllers, input uh, game pads, mice, so on. Uh, frame pacing for uh, helps your OpenGL and Vulkan games using active smooth rendering and correct frame pacing on Android, simplifying development for high refresh rate displays. We've got high performance audio libraries, text input, and then the game activity, which makes interfacing with JNI so much easier, so you don't have to deal with Java if you don't want to. Optimization tools, GPU profilers, uh, normal profilers. And then they've got all this stuff is sort of broken down into various different pieces. So if you want to go ahead and grab it, when you go and do a git AGDK, uh, you're going to find it's broken out into a number of pieces. Uh, so we've got the libraries there, uh, like so. Uh, Android Studio, if you want to go ahead and grab it, you can. So you can use the AGDK libraries, the things like the game activity controllers and so on in Android Studio, if you so wish. Or what you can do is get the extension for Visual Studio, which by the way is a gigabyte in size. Uh, but unless you target Android as a platform in your existing Visual C++ project, making it easier to write C++ games for multiple platforms. That is definitely nice. Uh, that sample that we saw, the Endless Runner example, is available here as a one megabyte download. And then we've got all those various different tools available, the GPU inspector. Uh, and yeah, that is it. So it's broken down into a number of different pieces. But that is the Android Games Development Toolkit. Essentially, what it does is it makes it so C++ developers can work in Visual Studio if they wish, and they don't have to deal with Java or Android Studio, all basically called win-wins. And then the nice thing there also is they deal with the fragmentation. So you, if you've done any Android development, you know, oh, I need to get this version or this version, or you get a version hell really easy doing Android development. This also takes care of a lot of that. So if you just want to have access to the events from the Android system, but you want to work entirely in C and C++, and you especially if you want to work in Visual Studio, the AGDK is right for you. So anyways, that is it. Uh, I will uh, have all the relevant links down below if you want to go ahead and check that one out. Uh, definitely an interesting development, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Do you like working in Android? Do you like working in Android Studio? Are you fine with Java and JNI? Or are you happy to see something like this exist? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.